Okay, we're back with turn six. Let's see if uh, General's going to run out of artillery for his interdiction fire, and let's see if the Typhoons really have gone away and they're not just uh, toying with me. Now we're also going to be seeing what happens to our sticky friend over here. Um, see if anything Sherman like pops its head up down there and tries to take a pot shot at it. So. Go. Let's see if we can't get a decent angle. Ah, best stick with the wide camera. Alright, let's uh, press go and we'll see what happens. That's the fucker wolf shooting something up there. Which is awesome of it. I love that it went in there, shot something else up right now. Oops, Stug spotted another tank over there. It's hit it. Didn't penetrate though. That's that's interesting. Now, don't get hit. Shoot it again. There we go. Oh, and there's a six pound that's popped up next to that Sherman there, covering the Ford. Bit of infantry down there. And just at the end of the turn, the Fokker Wolf has started to shoot at something else. Something down here. So, okay. Let's uh, watch, see what our sticky friends did. Dreams out of the way. Bingo. Well, now we know why it was a difficult shot. And ooh, is that? I think it is. That's a firefly. It's got the uh, extra super long barrel on it for the 17 pounder gun. And then it's got the. Uh, um, I always thought that this bit here was a counterweight, and it's not. It's because the breach of the 17 pounder, you can just about see it there, the breach of the 17 pounder recoils so much when it fires it takes up the entire inside of the um, uh, of the turret so they welded on this box on the back to put the radios in so that they get crushed by the breach and this I assume this is a stowage box on top of that as well but uh, yeah if we've killed a firefly then bingo I'm happy it's got this little bit of um, wavy camo on the end of the barrel to make it harder to judge um, that it is actually a firefly because obviously it's a um, high priority target, it being uh, the only thing that Jen can really bring along that's um, the 17 pounder gun is the only thing Jen can really bring along that's going to be able to take Panthers on from the front and you can see he's in a fantastic position down there. Just pull down. But unfortunately for uh, Jen, I hit the gun there. Got the. Uh, it's looking this way. And that second shot, yeah, hits the hits the weapon mount. So the first one might have actually knocked out the gun. The second one, oh yeah, it's burning. It's gone. Have a look. Yeah, so that's uh, bounced off. There is a penetrating hit on the weapon, so maybe that actually knocked out the uh, 17 pounder on the first shot. And, uh, yeah, boom. In fact, I'm just looking at this here. It might be that the round has actually gone through the barrel and bounced off the gun mantler. Cool, let's have a look at it. It's definitely bounced off, and look, we've got that blue uh, blue marker there for a ricochet. 
how do I turn the shadows up? Yeah, there we go. But yeah, the blue is the ricochet, so that's that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can't isolate that a little bit. I think it's still probably going to happen a bit too fast. So it's around 34. It's still going to happen too fast for us to really see. So, okay, right, right, right. So, yeah, what's happened there is the uh, the game can't quite keep up with it. So the round has gone off in that direction. It didn't actually go through, and here it is bouncing off, making that awesome noise. Wow. And then the second one is straight through the gun mantlet, and that's uh, game over. Yeah. Uh, some people getting out. But that's a firefly down. That's excellent news. Uh, that's exactly the kind of thing that we want to be dead. And down here, what have we got? You can see that. Sluggy. And we just got... Uh, one Lee Enfield running forward there, but he's part of a bigger squad. You can see, you can tell as usual because the uh, the icon for the squad is not on top of him. So what have we got here? We've got that Sherman uh, a six pounder. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's a six pounder walking. Yeah, that's pretty funny. A six pounder crew walking past this gap in the hedgerow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't find that as funny as I am doing. Uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, these guys up here who can see that. That's that's amusing. I almost, I feel like we should have machine gunned them, to be honest. Just uh, these nonchalant Brits just like wander past, dragging this uh, six pounder. So, there's two real aspects here to General and his AT guns. So, we've seen uh, two so far. We've seen one down here, and then this one over here. And that tells us two things, because AT guns obviously aren't very good uh, in the attack. Obviously, they're going to be um, better in the defense, because they can't move up, because the poor bugger in the crew have to drag it. So if Jen is digging in over hello I'm going to have a look at I don't think that gap was there before. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, if Jen is uh, putting AT guns um, along here then this means that he's preparing for defence essentially. Or he wants to put uh, some kind of base of fire down so he can cover the, uh, the front slopes over here. The advantage of using the AT guns is that that's going to free up his armor. Uh, and that's going to give him a bit of flexibility. So mm, let's go and check. Yes, General has brought some sappers along and he is blowing through here. Whether this means that he's going for the Ford, which seems likely given the position, or he's just breaking into this um, sunken road. So that he can get up here. And yeah, he doesn't really have the option. So it looks like General is pushing up here. Like I was saying before, he's either going to set up in this orchard to cover this ground here, because he's got the enfilade. Or we could be looking at a push up here for him to seize the high ground and uh, flank round here. Which isn't the fight that I want, but it is also a decent enough defensive position if I can get people up there. Wouldn't it be nice if my open blitzes weren't all on fire? Or if I'd taken some half tracks, but, mm. you know. 
given the way the fight's developing, I would have been fairly happy to have some half tracks. But, yeah, we can't tell that from the word go. Plus side, let's have a look as the... Yeah, Jen's interdictions moved off. Uh, moved on here, moved on, finished. Oh, it's not happening right now, anyway. So, yeah, we can start moving these guys up here. Oh, Mr. Stug can stay there, he's doing a good job. Uh, this infantry here is almost in position. So we're going to take a, a bit of a less aggressive approach. We'll try moving this... Uh, who are you? Yeah, you're, you're a driver. We'll try moving these uh, guys up here. And yeah, chances are we're, if we're going to be attacking here, we're going to be uh, attacking into a kind of prepared defensive general. So his deployment zone is up here. Down here we've at least got enemy forces up to here, at least, probably further up. Um, I would expect Willis Jeeps or little armed cars or things to be... Um, when I tested it I could get into the crossing objective down there pretty quick. Uh, and obviously we've now seen I think three tanks down here, we've killed two of them. Uh, but we've seen three tanks, and that really um, means that General has definitely got a significant push going on there. Because uh, you can't have that many. Even two Shermans, well, a Sherman and a Firefly is still like a significant amount of combat power. So, yeah. The important thing here that... Um, might not be immediately obvious is that I don't think I'm really giving that much away to General at the moment, at the start, um, despite the fact that um, or the, the way that he's, he's run his interdiction fire and the typhoons and things and forced me to kind of hang around for the first five minutes back here means that it doesn't have a lot of intelligence on what I'm doing. So as far as I know, he knows about the Stug. That's all I know that he knows about. The rest of things I have, I've only got forward with a little bit. So whether he thinks that, uh, or he's definitely seen some um, Typhoon strikes uh, on the Cuba wagons and things. Cuba bargains, really. Um... But he doesn't have the whole picture. And hopefully he's going to be a little bit cautious because he doesn't know what I've got up. And that's going to give me the time that I need to um, sort things out. Now I'm going to spend a lot of time hoping that he doesn't have... Um, he's not trying to uh, fritz me out with the artillery. And he doesn't have a TRP down here. And now that... This barrage has gone off, and it was a pretty chunky barrage, you know, for five minutes. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of ammunition has gone out there. That's going to serve us well in the uh, or serve me well rather in the in the end game, or well from here on out because that's artillery now doesn't have. Um, uh, I'm just worried about that he might be trying to fake me out. So he's done this huge barrage, and he might have something up his sleeve that he's going to call in in the next couple of minutes. Uh, once I've moved into that area again uh, to try and catch me with my pants down, you know, just in case he's trying to lure me in. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, pre planned artillery um, starts at uh, the start of the game, five minutes in, ten minutes in, and fifteen minutes in. We just went past five minutes in and nothing's falling, so it's at least until the ten minute mark. Uh, that he's going to have something else if it's pre-planned. If it's a TRP, then that's another story. But again, it's a bit of a risk. I'm not expecting him to be doing that. So let's start. How well actually can our... Uh... Oh, we can so we got, you know, sort of got line of sight 
into bits of the uh, bits of that orchard up there from there. But you know they can just stay there and keep an eye out. Stuggy uh, or Kirchner's Stug. I'm not hundred. Uh, let's leave him there. I mean, General obviously tried to knock him out with the Firefly just then. Uh, that's why that Firefly popped up all down. So. So yeah, we'll leave that there, and I'll start moving uh, these things up. Oh please, let's have some uh, holes in the bacage. There's one. You guys are going back here. And this is on the reverse slope, so... That there, yeah, this... This road here isn't a fantastic road. Can we get through there? Is that a gap? I don't think so. Why did I put the pioneers in the trucks with the AT guns? Why oh why oh why? What I should have done when I took this map from the scenario was add in a load of holes into the car. This is just annoying. Really constricts your freedom of movement in a pretty nasty kind of way. I should be better safe there, and we can move up into um, this orchard where I still can't really see anything. So we kind of have eyes on what's going on here, so let's try and shuffle these uh, MG teams this way. I still can't see anything. Oh dear. Oh, we've got a mare for moving. And these uh, poor bastards carrying the mortar. a bit knackered. I'm going to stash this uh, infantry platoon in the auctions. In the trees rather. Uh, this one meanwhile is, is going to be moving up. 
to support the slug a bit. So uh, they're up there, we'll have a bit of a reorg while we're there. Actually. what I'm on about with the talking about fragmentary lines of sight. Mm. So let's move this platoon up. Into the next field. to the uh, front where we might need them. Our friendly driver there has been promoted to um, scout. How much ammo have we got left with the uh, Loads of armor left in the air, but it's oh, I didn't want that pack forty. Time being, it's not going to be able to be spotted by any of that. Uh, no. Uh, might have a, might get spotted when it's moving across there, but at least we've moved it up. This is the second company is going to be the reserve company. That's why they're lurking around like that. You guys with the pack 40, you poor unfortunate people. I'm going to be going on a bit of an odyssey with it. It's going to be like that uh, the Stalingrad movie. along the river. And the Panthers. Let's keep the Panthers in the pocket until later. We can 
see that people riding. Yeah, we should be good for now. Yeah, so let's um, return back and see what happens. Oh, quick one. Let's see. What's our fucker wolf friend doing? He's almost at 20 mil ammo. Uh, how much he's slowing General's forces down there? I don't know. Probably not enough. Uh, we may as well keep him going now. Send the turn back. 